In this problem, we're told a 145 gram baseball is dropped from a tree 14 meters above the ground. A, with what speed would it hit the ground if air resistance could be ignored? And B, if it actually hits the ground with a speed of eight meters per second, what is the average force of air resistance exerted on it? So there's gonna be two different things we have to do, one with air resistance, one without. So let's just go ahead and draw what's going on first and then we'll start with A. So we have this baseball, right? It's gonna be dropped from a tree. So imagine this right here is our tree. So this is the top of the tree. And so this baseball is gonna be dropped it's going to go 14 meters and then hit the ground. So baseball is going to start here, go all the way down, hit the ground, right? So this is going to be our baseball at the beginning, baseball at the end. We know the mass of the baseball is going to be equal to 145 grams. So that's the mass of the baseball. And so what we want to do first is label the velocity at the beginning of the end. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to call the beginning V sub 1 and then V sub 2. And so keep in mind what they're trying to find. They're trying to find the speed, it would hit the ground. So we're trying to find the velocity at the end, or V sub 2. And so we know V sub 1 is going to be 0 meters per second. And the reason this is is because it starts from rest, right? So we're dropping this baseball, it starts from rest, and then it's going to go all the way down. And at some point, or when it hits the ground, we're trying to find the velocity at that point. So how do we solve this problem? So we're going to use, uh, solve this problem by using energy. And so there's two formulas you need to know, which are kinetic energy, the formula for, for it, right? The formula for kinetic energy and then the formula for potential energy. And so the formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. The formula for potential energy is gonna be equal to mgy. And so m is just the mass, the velocity is the velocity, or v is the velocity, g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and then y is gonna be the height at that point, right? So wherever you're choosing it to be. And so the way we solve this problem is by saying the energy in the beginning, we could call this energy sub one, right, the energy at this point is going to have to be equal to the energy at the end. And so essentially the way we do this is E sub 1 is just going to be the kinetic energy at the beginning plus the potential energy at the beginning. And then E sub 2 is the kinetic energy at the end, potential energy at the end. So we can just say 1 half mv1 squared, right, and I'm putting it v1 because the velocity at the beginning, right, which is v sub 1, plus mgy1 because y1 is the height in the beginning equals one half mv2 squared, the velocity at the end, and then mg y2. So these are gonna be the two different cases, right? So we're just taking the energy at the beginning and setting it equal to the energy at the end. And so the reason this one doesn't have air resistance and the other one will, so we're gonna have to do a bit of modifications to this, but this one, you don't really have to worry about it. So essentially we just have to solve this formula. And so we just need to determine each of the variables. So let's write given right here, v1, v2, y1, and y2. So these are the variables we need to find. So what is V1? So in the beginning I said it starts at rest, so zero meters per second. V2 is what we're solving for in the problem, right? The velocity at the end. So we just say V2 equals question mark. Y1 is gonna be the height in the beginning, which is just 14 meters, because this distance right here is 14 meters. And then Y2 is going to be uh, the height at the end. So what's the height at the end? If it starts here at 14 meters, it's gonna go to zero, because zero is where it's at at the end because it's hitting the ground. So zero meters. And so we, now we have all the variables we need. And so you might be thinking we don't have the mass, but what you should notice is that every term has an M. So we can just cancel it from every term. So just get rid of these. And so a couple of these variables are going to cancel out and you'll see in a second. So if we just start plugging it in, one half V1, V is zero, right? So V1 zero. So zero squared times one half is just zero. So it's really zero plus G times Y1. Y1 is 14. So 14g, I'm just going to write, equals 1 half uh, v times 2, or v sub 2 squared. And we're trying to solve for v sub 2, so we just leave it, plus g times y2. And so y2 is 0, so 0 times g, which is 9.8, is just going to be 0. So really, 14g equals 1 half v2 squared. So we're trying, trying to solve for v2. So multiply both sides by 2, and we can get rid of this 1 half right here. So multiply both sides by 2, so 2 times 14g is equal to v2 squared. And if we square root both sides, right, that's going to get rid of this one half square root. So really v2 equals the square root of all this. So square root of 2 times 14 times g, which is 9.8. Right, that's going to be equal to v2. So if you take out your calculator and you go ahead and do this, the square root of 2 multiplied by 14, multiply that by 9.8, you're going to get that it equals, or v sub 2, right, the velocity at the end is equal to 16.565 and so on. Uh, you can round if you want. I'm going to go ahead and round to the tenths place. So 16.6 meters per second, right? Because we're using meters and seconds. So 
the speed for A, or the answer to A, the speed uh, ignoring air resistance is going to be 16.6 .6 meters per second. So this is your answer to A. I'm going to go ahead and er erase what's on screen. So if you need any of this, write it down right now because I'm going to go ahead and attempt B. So answer to A, but I'm erasing it. So now what we want to do is go ahead and do B. And so B is going to be a little bit different, but it's going to be basically the same thing. So this one's going to be, if it hits the ground with a speed of something, right, we know that speed, what's going to be the average force of air resistance? So we're trying to find the air resistance. And so let me redraw what's going on here again. So if we say our baseball's here, then it ends here at the ground. Uh, it's going to travel this distance, 14 meters. And so we can label each thing again. So this is V1, this is V2. So V1 again is going to be zero, but V2, they tell us it's going to hit the ground with a speed of eight meters per second. So this right here is going to be eight meters per second. But keep in mind, we're trying to find the average force of air resistance. So while it falls, there's going to be some force of air resistance that's going to slow it down, uh, right? Because we found it was 16.6, .6, so it's going to be slowing down compared to the last one. And so the way we're going to solve this one is very similar to the last one. And so the way we're going to do this is just by saying, uh, Remember our formulas for kinetic and potential energy. So let me write them again, mg times y, and then this one is 1 half mv squared. So you're going to do the same thing in the last one, right? So take the energy in the beginning, uh, mv, we'll just say 1 squared, plus mgy, right? But there's going to be a different thing here. So we have to take into account the work. Uh, we have to, well, we're going to say the work because all these are energies and work is energy. So we have to subtract the work. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. So let me just write this out. So mv2 squared plus mgy2. So similar to the last one. But let me think about think about what this is. This right here is the energy being the beginning. We can call it E, right? Minus W, which is going to be the energy lost due to air resistance. And so this right here is going to be equal to E sub 2. So we add the energy in the beginning. We subtract the energy lost due to air resistance. And we're going to have the energy at the end. So essentially, that's what and we're trying to find. Well, we're trying to solve for W. And that's going to allow us to go ahead and solve for the friction. So uh, what we're going to do first is think about what W is. So work is equal to force times distance. So what is the force that's being applied here? The force is going to be the force due to air resistance. You can call it what you want. I'm going to call it F sub F, the force of friction of air resistance. So the work in this case is going to be equal to F sub F, which is what we're trying to find, right? The force from air resistance times the distance. So essentially, that's what we're going to do. So we can replace this with this. So just say 1 half mv1 squared plus mg, this is y1, I forgot to write it, y1 minus, and what I'm going to do is actually just add it to the other side, right? Because it's minus here, I'm just adding it to the other side, right? It cancels. So equals 1 half mv sub 2 squared plus mg y2 plus work, which we know is f sub f times d. So what we're trying to do here is go ahead and solve for D. So that's what we're going to do. And so the way you're going to want to do this is by uh, manipulating this equation a bit. So you can notice that all the M's, uh, what, if you want to put an M over this, but essentially just manipulate this equation. And if you manipulate it, you're going to get the force of friction is equal to M times G times Y sub 1 over D minus v sub 2 squared over d. So this right here is going to be your formula. And so all you got to do is just plug in different variables. So the way you're going to want to do this is say that, right? So keep in mind, we uh, know the mass. It's going to be 1 point, the mass is 145 g's. But when you solve this, you have to use kilograms. So we're going to have to convert this into kg when we actually plug it in for this equation. So what you want to do is plug it in. Um, so plug it in, which is, so, or just say 145G, right? And you want to multiply it by, or there's 1,000, or you just divide it by 1,000. So essentially 1,000 Gs, or 145G grams is 1.45 kilograms. Sorry about that. It's just 145 kilograms. So that's right there going to be the mass, right? I forgot to write it down, but 0.145 kg because we needed to do that to convert it to kg so we can actually solve. So it's going to be equal to 0.145 and then just plug in your stuff. So g is 9.8. We know 9.8 meters per second. And then y1 is going to be the height in the beginning. So what was the height in the beginning? Well, it starts at 14 meters up, right? So 14 
over 14 or the distance what is the distance it travels it's going to travel 14 meters so 14 over 14 is just one so 9.8 times one is 9.8 still so minus v sub 2 remember they told us the velocity in the end or at the end is eight so it's really eight squared right here and then divide it by the distance it travels what's the distance it travels again it's 14. And so I actually wrote this equation wrong. I'm so sorry about that. This is V2 squared times 2D. So sorry if you messed up there, but I forgot to include the two. So really this is V squared or V sub two squared over 2D. So I'm sorry about that because of the one half, right? I didn't take into account the one half when I mixed this up, but uh, really it's V squared over 2D. So this is two times 14, which is the distance, right? Because you have two times the distance, which is 14. I'm so sorry about that, but uh, just remember the twos there. So uh, now we can just go ahead and solve. So if you go ahead and do this, you do 0.145, right? The mass multiplied by 9.8 minus 8 squared, right? So 64, and then divide that by 2 times 14, which is just 28. So if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get that. Uh, it's going to be equal to 1.089. And then keep in mind what this is. It's a force, so it's newtons. So 1.089 newtons. You can round this to 1.09 if you want, right? Just rounding it. So 1.09 newtons, that's going to be the force, right? The force of air resistance, right? That slows down our ball. So 1.09 newtons. And so it's also going to be upward, right? Because this is where the force is going. The force is upward. It's acting this way. So... 1.09 newtons, it's upward because that's where the force is going. It's slowing it down, right? It's acting in the opposite direction. So this right here is going to be your answer to B, right? Because this was B. Yeah, so B. And yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.